Hey. How are you doing, Ty? Good. How are you doing? Good. Long time no see. Oh, it's been forever. It's been what, like two years at this point? Yes, 2018. Yeah. That's insane. Oh my gosh, we got Ty Walker here. We've been trying to do this for a long time. It's been a minute. It's been a minute. <laughs> That's the that's the production life. We uh we have no time. That's oh. that is the, the downside. It's crazy. Oh my gosh, it's so good to see you virtually, but still it's nice to see your face. Likewise, likewise. Good to see you too. Tell me what has been going on. Uh okay, since when? Because in the last like two weeks a lot's been going on. So how about this? Tell me what you were doing before the whole coronavirus situation. Like, um, what projects were you working on? What kind of life was like day to day? Uh, so right before, um, I was working on a Netflix show called Simply Halston or Halston. I'm not sure where they they fell on what the actual final name's going to be. Um, I don't know, it seemed it was a it was a hard show. That was a hard one. Um, what are you doing on it? I was doing first team, so I was working directly with all of you know main cast and everything. Uh, specifically, they told me after I got hired, um, I'm the personal PA for number one. Which oh. I don't know if I'm allowed to say. Oh wait, no. There's press release. It's uh, it's Ewan McGregor. Who? Ewan McGregor is the uh, number one. So I'm his personal PA in addition to being... Everybody else's. Partner. Yeah. Okay. How is that? Because I've been hearing of that a little bit more where they have like... It's not their assistant, but it's their personal PA. Like, what mm -hmm. are you supposed to do for them? Because don't they... Do they not have an assistant or... Well, what's the deal with that? I don't... I mean... So this is actually the second, my second job where I'm the personal PA to number one. My first one was uh, this, the current season of Law & Order. Mm -hmm. I was uh, Mariska's personal oh, for, okay. uh, till I left that show. Mm. But, um, <laughs> talk about that. Huh? <laughs> I said we're not going to talk about that? I mean, like, it wasn't a bad thing. It was just, you know, that was, uh, they have uh like an hours cap so you can only work 14 hours mm. and for pas like we don't make any money until we hit 14 hours yeah. and before that i had been doing paperwork for a year so i'm used to doing like 17 18 hour days so, you so it was, yeah it was a it was a big yeah, hit to the time, people who don't know after i mean like after eight hours you automatically get overtime um, right standard is 12 so once you start going over 12 it's just like bring on yeah. extra extra money yeah i mean like it's just i mean well the thing is like the way our day rates work out uh down here at least it's 210 over 12 so like we don't start making money until after we hit like we hit overtime after 12 hours yeah. so it's just like it was it was a big hit to the wallet um and it was a different kind of show for me. It wasn't really a show that I was used to. Because they've you know, been that so long. They have it a certain kind of way they do stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, it's a I machine. Coming into that, yeah. And, like, I mean, I don't know. Like, I, the thing I like about this business is that we do something different every day. Mm -hmm. And so, like, if we're pretty much sticking with a formula yeah. every day, they, it just kind of gets a little boring because you're like okay I know what the next four shots are going to be yeah. because they've read the sides this morning so it's just it's not a lot of excitement yeah but I don't know what it is about like people using personal PAs these days mm. um I mean for some it makes sense for them to have an assistant for others not really but I think it's they want to they want to have like they want to know one person for sure yeah, you know, to go to if they need something. Right, and that's pretty much how it is. Um, you know, I know that he's a big coffee guy, so 
I always make sure that I have that around and, you know, I like, I know the kind of the snacks that he likes and kind of, you know, his, you know, the way he works, mm -hmm. you know, some people like you knock on their trailer and say, Hey, we're ready for you. And they're like, okay, I'll be right out. And then it's 10 minutes later and they're still not out, yeah. you know, and then you have some other people who are, you knock and, you know, before you could finish your sentence, they've got all their stuff and they're halfway down the block. Mm -hmm. So, you know, it's, it's helpful, I guess, to have one person around who knows those specific things when you have somebody like, like him. Yeah. So I guess oh, this whole COVID-19, can you tell me a little bit about how that has, I guess, like directly impacted you, like since everything got shut down? Because you're in the city still, right? Yeah, we're in Brooklyn. Yeah. So it's how has so for you since that has kind of just blown up well we kind of our show shut down so like the everything that kind of happened like thursday a couple of weeks ago it was on a thursday a bunch of shows started shutting down and we were still shooting and we were still planning on shooting the next day they had shifted the whole day around and we got to work and uh they shut us all down so since then it's basically been like I don't know what like it's everything everything is just up in the air. Like yeah. I don't know A when we're coming back, if we're coming back, when that all happens, if there's gonna be prep periods and like because your whole show is just now like oh, everything you had planned is just kind of up in the air. Yeah. So that's really what it's been. It's just so like are you still are they paying you guys at all? Like do you have any communication with anybody? Are they letting you know what's going on? What is it? Yeah. That 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 is very that is something that's been really good, is that A, our ADs are very much in communication with all the PAs with whatever they find out. Um and Netflix has been really great and they paid us for the first two weeks that we were shut down. And then they have, like there was a Netflix fund or whatever, so they're able to pay us for the net, for another two weeks. So, you know, it was, it was very, very nice. And like, shout out to Netflix and thank you. <laughs> but wow. yeah, at the same time, the whole thing is like, I don't know what, like what everything what looks like. You guys based on an eight hour day or a 12 hour day? They're, they're basing it off of the 12 hour day. I think I, that's what it was for the first two weeks. Okay. Um, but if they're doing it by whatever your base rate is. So for IATSE members, I assume for most of them, it's eight. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, it's, it's a lot less than we're used to because of our overtime. And on this show, we were, we were getting <laughs> overtime. I mean, but you can't even be mad at that, you know? No, and that's the thing. You can't be mad at it, but it's one of those things that at the end of the week, you're like, I can't stand right now. Yeah, because you're just sitting doing nothing. Hmm? Or, or it's like, what is there to do? And it's always a question of, well, how long are they going to keep paying us? How long is this going to last? You know, it's more of the question of like, I don't know what is next. It's always up in the air of what's going to happen. Right, right. And they, it's it's one of those things like they can't they it's always a wonder like are are we even going to come back yeah like we're gonna have seeing, a job to return to yeah like i keep seeing like all of the the trade magazine articles and everything talking about like what the what it's doing to the industry as a whole yeah and like i saw an article that had um they were interviewing a bunch of industry people and they're like so what would it need what would you need for everything to come back and everyone's like i need a guarantee that nobody's gonna get sick like <laughs> i need I guarantee that though right and that's the other problem like so especially in our job you can guarantee that in a normal situation you would have to just take crazy precautions right and so and it's hard to it's hard to even do when you're still trying to get people tested so i think that that's like there's a lot of very basic level things that are not happening that need to happen for anything else to kind of fill up. It is crazy because it's like, all right, when it's time to come back, you can't operate at the same level you were operating before. Like you have to take certain kind of precautions. And so mm -hmm. now it's like, 
will they have less people on set? Will they hire less people? You know what I mean? To make sure that the sets are smaller. It's right. like they're going to have to change something because I'm pretty sure certain projects want to come back in film. But mm-hmm. it's like they also don't want any crazy insurance money for people getting sick. Right. I mean, like, do you have, like, do you hire a crew of people that specifically go around to every spot on a set all day long and just clean, clean and inspect stuff? They're going to have to do, something's going to have, something different is going to have to be done. More cleaning, maybe even people, you'll see more people with masks just to, you know. Yeah. I think more gloves. I think you'll see less people all together I think maybe like especially when they're rolling they're like whoever doesn't need to be here really doesn't need to be here anymore like I think it's gonna yeah. be it's I'm not sure but I think it's definitely gonna be some kind of changes that they make for sure yeah, they have to like make it safe. you're it's like because at some point people are just gonna be like well I'm not I'm just not gonna work then in that case but I think also a lot of people want to go back to work Pe- like people who aren't yeah, you know, no, no, absolutely but I think you're gonna you could have people being a lot more specific like a lot more uh, picky about their jobs. Yeah. And stuff in this industry travels really quick. So if you know a job that has like pretty crappy cleaning process, uh, I'm out of it. it's, it's like <laughs> I'm not going to that job and I'm telling everybody else not to go either. It's like, I think it's a toss up of a lot of people who, because there are people who like wanted to stay working if they could. So I think it's that fine line of people who like want to start working again. Mm-hmm either because they just kind of want to get on with their life or they're not bringing any money in. And then those people who like, I absolutely don't even want to work at all. And so it's like, once this whole thing and this kind of like trying to figure out how to like balance the two together so that you can have people starting to work again, but make sure the people who are like really nervous also feel safe too. Yeah. I mean, safety is the most important thing on any set. They say that all the time, but now it's going to be like up by a thousand. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Like, especially where you are, like, especially in the city. That's yeah. why I think it, it's, like, even crazier there because, I mean, that's the, the center of all this, especially for, in the, UN, for the U.S. And so I think uh, they're just going to have a lot on their hands, the producers, the ADs, um, you know, department heads, to really just figure out a way to kind of make sure you guys are all okay once everybody starts filming again because... Yeah, and I'm hoping that this also, like, changes the way that we, that, that like, people being sick are dealt with. Like, I mean, well, I mean, like, there's, uh, nobody ever wants to be the person to call out sick. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you're just like, it's... I'm going to go win. Yeah, sometimes it's just like, I don't know if I could even ask, like, I know I'm sick, but I'm, I can stand and, like... I hope that that kind of changes that whole practice and people are a lot more understanding of like even if you got a cold like you know what's so crazy that you said that because so on it's been it's back in 2018 um I was working in Jersey on this NBC show The Enemy Within Mm -hmm. and I don't get sick often but I had got really sick uh for Mm -hmm. like three days and it was to the point where it was like I couldn't really walk like I would come in and I would just sit I didn't have any any energy to do anything. Like anytime there were packages downstairs, I would like ask if the guys could go get them, and like yeah. I would go. I would leave work, take like a bunch of day Nyquil medicine, and just sleep the entire time, and then get up like, at the last minute. Like I had no energy, and it's mm-hmm. so weird looking back because I'm like, why didn't I just say like, like they like they knew I was sick, but it was I feel like it wasn't even thought like, oh she shouldn't come, right? And I so think why that that's- I say like. I'm not coming. Like, I can't come. Like, I'm sick. Like, I need to just rest for two days. Maybe it would have even, la- you know, I would have recovered quicker than coming to work and then going home. Like, I haven't felt that sick in such a long time. And for some reason, I felt like, oh, no, I can't. Like, I mean, look, I think that that's something that, especially on, like, the assistant level, like, that we have this mindset that's just, like, I don't know, at least my mindset is, like, oh, if I'm not there it takes like they're gonna call somebody else in. Yeah. Call, and what if that person's better than me? Like, <laughs> I'm not trying to my job. like it's because it's because it's one of those things. Like we work in a really cool industry, and there's a line of people that are trying to get their foot in the door. It's gonna replace me real quick. Yeah. Like I don't know. I and I think that that's. I don't know. I feel like that's a systemic thing from 
way back or it's just like in general like i mean even when you're in an entry level um but i also think in general like you just are nervous you don't want to give anyone the ability to kind of take your spot but also this I mean, it's such a different type of energy where it's not like, oh yeah, you have sick days. You know, it's not yeah. like it's not like that. Where it's like, yeah, you have your ten sick days. Um, like nobody talks about that. You know, you don't have time off, so it's just like it's a weird kind of dynamic to ask, like, oh, can I stay home? I'm not feeling good. I have a friend who got we were when we were shooting outdoors. We're shooting like in a woodsy kind of area. Mm-hmm. She got bit by a tick didn't know it next day uh like had the medic look at like where she got bit by pulled the tick out and we had to force her to go to like she had we had to force her to go to the doctor yeah Lyme's disease though yeah but I mean that's the mentality that sometimes you have is just like I well I mean like I'm just gonna keep going because then you feel like oh people are gonna notice that and then it'll help me like move yeah and it's or and it's just like I don't know I feel like that kind of energy and like mentality is is pushed a lot on our level yeah and it's kind of it's unspoken but it's one of those it's one of those things you know even our level because think about it like imagine a department head like not coming in because they're sick I, it's don't, I know a few that though like i don't like so far on any jobs like i don't really see a department head say they're not well and like not really come in like or I'm even just thinking about mainly in my department like production like you don't see coordinators or them like be like oh yeah I can't come in like what what would happen if they did not come into work yeah I've seen a few I know a few department heads who have it's not often but like I don't know it's another thing at that um, when you once you get that level to that like department head level you have the ability to be like, or at least in where we are on set, like, you know, department head could be like, oh, you know what, I'm not really feeling well. I'm going to let the best boy handle it this day. You know, kind of that kind of movement is allowed. Mm -hmm. uh, Or at least the ability to have that. Yeah. Um, It's it's not very much like that in the AP department. I think the opposite, because I feel like, I don't know, like, they have to be there to kind of make the decision so there's no way that they can leave but i guess like i get what you're saying it's like well they can have someone else take care of it and i'm Mm -hmm. I'm like but they don't even have the option to leave because who who would handle it but well i mean like if it's a if it's an easy not necessarily an easier day but not like a crazy big day you know nine times out of ten you've trained your key to kind of think the way you do and see things the way you do yeah so you're comfortable letting your key kind of handle things. Yeah, I definitely think that um, we will. I mean, I don't know if the shift will continue to happen, but I definitely think once we start working again, if anybody says they feel sick, it's just like, oh. <laughs> yeah. <that's- laughs> They're like, please just go home. Like, just take, if you got, if you cough, if you sneeze on set, they're going to be like, just take the next thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, just don't even come in because. They don't want to take any chances at all. And it's not even, it's more of like, now they're worried about if you're going to pick everybody else. And then you know, the whole yeah. thing will get shut down. So. Well, I mean, like a cold goes around a crew, like nothing. Like we had on Dickinson this year, we, there, we had this, this like super baby flu. Like it wasn't the full blown flu, but it was much more than a cold. Mm-hmm. And that thing went through the crew like wildfire. I haven't gotten like sick sick in like two years. Mm-hmm. This thing took me out for four days. Holy, were you, and you were still going to work, weren't you? No, 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 no. Oh. I, they sent me home from work and then wouldn't let me come back. But like at that point, it had gone through half the crew. It just had made its way to the AD department at that point. <laughs> wow. So oh, like at, the, at this point, like that's definitely not going to happen on another show. <laughs> yeah. After- no, I wanted to ask you. I know you said that you've been in like constant communication with the ads. What kind of things are you know they talking to you about, or what other conversations kind of like? Well, we have our sh- our uh, group chat, our ad department group chat, and we just kind of like, I don't know. We've been 
just talking, everybody's been talking and checking in with each other and like kind of keeping the, the thing light. Um, but that's usually where we'll get some information about what we're kind of looking at. Yeah. So a while ago, you know, our second texted us and said she had uh, spoken to the producers and that's how we found out that um, Netflix was going to be paying us uh, for the next few weeks, next couple of weeks, you know, and so like that's just, I mean, we, it's not really like a... A lot of information. Yeah, it's not a ton of information, but there is some information that we're getting from that. Yeah. Do you it's know other departments are, like, is Netflix paying every, like, all the other crew members as well? Is it just kind of like the AD department or? Um, I don't know what it is for other shows, and I don't know how, like, what the specifics are for each department. Mm -hmm. um, but from what I saw, it looked like other departments, but I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Yeah, yeah. Man, this is just crazy. How's like your family? You know, how's everybody doing? Are you staying inside? Are you practicing social distancing? I'm practicing social distancing. Um, it's just me, my wife, and my dog here. Um, and we're, you know, hunkered down in Brooklyn. We went out to Target today for grab a couple of things, and that was very much just like, uh, hmm? Was it crowded there or? No, we went pretty early, so it was pretty, it was decent, but. I mean, I've gone to a grocery store at like nine and it's been packed. So, I mean, I think a lot of the panic buying is kind of calming down, but um, you know, it's not terribly crowded. It's like the streets are empty and that's crazy. Yeah. So. But I was gonna ask what's kind of like the, I don't know, the vibe like in the city right now. When you step out, what, what kind of vibe are you getting from you know, everyone? Well, that's the thing, There's, you don't really see anybody. Like you see, and everybody you see like has like a mask and is walking very quickly and you know away from other people so that's yeah. like people still saying hi to each other or are they kind of just shying away like trying well to and our, neighbor, our neighborhood's pretty close or like people have lived here for a bit mm -hmm. so you know you see people talking to each other you just don't like there's it's just a lot fewer yeah so like, see groups of people but like they're not big groups and they're like trying to move from a to b very quickly yeah does it feel a little eerie it does like every once in a while like we'll just like hit pause on the tv or whatever and just listen because you can't it, it's very very weird Especially like it, New York City. it's empty out there wow yeah i see all those um videos that they'll post like of times square or even of the subways where it's just like empty like, and you know, for New York City, that's like so rare to see yeah. like, nobody out, you know, it's always yeah. crowded with tons and tons and tons of people. So now it's just like to see nobody there. It's like a ghost town. Yeah. Traffic is non-existent. Like, it's really crazy. Wow. How do you think besides health wise, what kind of change do you think are going to be made um, in the industry? Like, what do you think is going to be different? outside of, I it's I don't even know like outside of just like the different like set practices are going to change like that that is going to be like a big focal point because everybody knows that you can do as much as you can on a set and it's not always going to be like the most sanitary place mm -hmm. I mean as long as people are doing what they're supposed to do like if everybody's washing their hands and everything but like at the same time, sometimes you have upwards of like 100 plus people walking through the same hallway, you know? So I don't know, like, I don't, I have no idea. Outside of that, I have no idea. Yeah. How I feel like the cards are on the table right now, though. <laughs> yeah. How have you been doing, like, mentally? Like, are you doing different things to kind of occupy yourself? Like, I guess, how have you been getting through these past two, three weeks without going crazy? Well, um, it's been really, really nice being home. Yeah, uh, never home. You at work for like 17 hours. I mean, I think I've done four or five shows like back to back with, I think at the most a month in between. Yeah. And um, so like my wife and I just do not see each other. And it's been really nice to have this time for us to just kind of hang out and yeah. like, you know, 
be married and it's been that's really cool um that's been really awesome um i've been writing which has been also very good uh, Does because you ever i have the other time to write i never have the time to write <laughs> so and like i don't want to be a pa forever so it's i don't want to be in the ad department forever so i'm really happy to get a chance to work on trying to get out <laughs> So what do you want to do? I thought you wanted to become an AD. No, I want nothing to do with the AD department, but <laughs> I mean, I'm here and I am. You rock yeah. it, Ty. You rock I'm, it. I'm going on that track and I'm going to be on it until I can figure a way out. Yeah, so I'm going to make the money. I'm not going to lie. Yeah. That's the thing. There are worse jobs to have <laughs> than being an assistant director. <laughs> a lot uh, worse. A lot worse. A lot worse jobs on the wallet and, you know, the lifestyle. Yeah. It's pretty, it's pretty good to be an AD. <laughs> um, but I, I don't want that. <laughs> um, you. It's okay. No. I want to I want to write and direct and I want to write and produce with the option to direct okay. so I mean when I, I went to NYU for, for film school and I focused mainly on producing there mm -hmm. and I found that I really really enjoyed kind of putting everything together yeah. and it was very apparent to me when I got there that I could do some things I am clearly not the best, mm -hmm. but I like to think that I have an eye for what looks good in people, and I feel like I'm a much better writer than either, but. <laughs> <laughs> You're like, I can still kind of get it done. Yeah, yeah. So, Mia, no, I was, I, I don't know why I, um, like, I thought that you wanted to be, I guess just because you've been in it for so long, and you're always in the department, I just assumed that you wanted to become an a AD, like. Well, it's just, I mean, my first job was like, I was an intern and they put me in the AD department mm -hmm. and I don't know, the AD department just makes sense to me. Yeah. Like I'm not carrying equipment that is very heavy most of the time. <laughs> um, you know, so I, I don't have to, I don't have to worry about blowing power anywhere. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have to worry about losing some teeny tiny prop you know uh but logistics i don't know that stuff makes sense to me yeah no i totally get it i mean i knew like i didn't want to work in art or mm -hmm. wardrobe or set deck you know what i mean um production kind of just made the most sense to me yeah um and i've worked on set once but for the most part, everything else has been in the production office, um, kind of through that way. But no, I, I'm glad to hear that you have been able to write because um, I know this is a crazy time for some people. And so I had talked to Kyle and Harry. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I love Kyle and Harry. We talked a little bit about like how it's okay if you don't feel like you can be creative right now. You know what I mean? Like it's all right if you're, it's a tough time, but it is nice to hear that you have been able to write like do you have you been forcing yourself or is it just naturally like you've been able to write during this time it's a kind it's a combination um like when this all started i was like well i'm gonna be in the house for at least two weeks yeah maybe i can get a little writing done and then i started reading and seeing that this was going to be much much longer much longer yeah and so, and my wife's been working from home, and so I didn't want to be, you know, just sitting here, you know. So I, I decided that I was actually going to get serious about writing in terms of just how, how to write, and then, like, using that to work on my own stuff. Yeah. So I watched a masterclass that kind of reignited my creative juices that have kind of been dormant for a little bit so it's been a little easier <laughs> I think it's nice to have a balance where it's like you don't feel pressure you know it's like do it at your own pace right don't get caught up in it just like 
if you're feeling creative, right, you know, whatever it is, just like don't pressure yourself. Like, oh my God, not at this time. I have to be doing something and you're forcing yourself to come with ideas. Um, right. It's been really great. Like even just the whole, starting the whole process has kind of like gotten my brain to constantly think about the story that I want to tell. Mm-hmm. And so now, like, even if I'm not doing anything writing wise or like, you know, if I'm just playing a video game or something, that story is still in my head. And I'm like, okay, so maybe if this work moves here or what does this scene look like? And so it it's That's nice to even think, think about it. About yeah. It. Whereas before it's like, you don't even have the option. Like we just have time to think, get more in tune with ourselves, what we yeah. want. Whereas you're just always working, 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 working that you don't even like have days or hours like you go to work come home go to sleep cook it's just like a whole routine pattern it's like and even when you have a week or so off you're you're looking for the next one you know or you're like oh i'm going on vacation it's like you don't have time to just sit here and like really think about things so that's kind of what i'm enjoying the most is i've been having a lot of conversations um getting in tune with myself thinking more about what i really want and just whatever's in my mind, I can really analyze it, you know, and that's kind of just been one of the greatest things. Yeah, it's been really, something that I realized is that over the course of this thing, since I've been home, I've, st- like, I've started to forget what it was like to be a PA, and I was like, oh, I like this, yeah. and that's kind of been, like, a thing where it's like, okay, so now, how do I get out, like, I want, like, let me get my script done. Let me, like, put together a show Bible. And even if I can't send it to an agent or whatever, which is, you know, this is all the dream or whatever, I can enter it in contests and at least find out where I'm at. You know, I can, I can do something. So it's, it's nice to kind of, it's been really great to not be a PA. (laughs) So easy to get up in it that you kind of lose sight of why you even went into it in the first place yeah and like when people are like oh man I really want to be a PA it's like yeah (laughs) (laughs) it's I mean like but at the same time it's it's the only job that I could do at the beginning you know, it's, it's the, I, when I first got into it, it was the only job I knew I, like, I could do. Yeah. And it's been the most helpful. You know, I now know where, like, I was looking at a short film I did when I was in school. And a friend of mine's helping me edit it. So we've been going back and forth. And I've just, looking at it, I know what I could have done to make it better. Yeah. And just in terms of planning or shots or whatever. And I learned all that from being a PA and watching, like, real people do it. Yeah, that so. you wouldn't have learned otherwise had you not have had the opportunity to, you know, be a PA in this industry. Right. So I'm very grateful for the opportunity to be a PA. But well, you just don't decide of what, what you want to really be doing. Right. And that's the, that is why I say things like I don't want to be an AD or whatever. It's because I need to remind myself that because I know that I could AD Mm -hmm. and I know that I could get very comfortable doing it and that's not but I'm not not encouraging I'm just saying you you would be a good AD oh yeah well no thank you I I appreciate it (laughs) (laughs) no I it's just like it's it's just that's not why like that's not why I went to school that's not why I ran around trying to find work outside of Buffalo. Like that's not why I did all that. I did it so that I could get as much experience as I could and see how this industry works so that when it's my turn, I could be the best possible version of creative that I can be. Yeah. We gonna get there. We gonna get there. How are you doing? I, we just been talking about me. How are you doing? Like, what has been going on? With you. <laughs> so okay, so I mean, like, just shorten it. Like, what from the past couple weeks? Yeah, whatever. Give me everything. Um. It's, okay. Well, where to go? All right. So, 
since after 2018 we left, that was what, Bashira? Yeah, yes. After Bashira, I went to Jersey, worked mm-hmm. on that TV show, an NBC show. I was there for like eight, nine months. Then that's when I got the opportunity to come back to Buffalo to work on A Quiet Place too. Um, mm-hmm. And I, I was trying to become an uh, assistant to a producer. That was kind of like the thing that I wanted to do next. Mm-hmm. So um, for A Quiet Place too, I ended up getting that opportunity. So I came back to Buffalo was the assistant to Joanne Peritano, who's like the most awesomest person ever. Mm-hmm. Um, and then I did that till October of last year. And then I had like a couple weeks off and then I worked on a movie in Syracuse as an assistant uh, production coordinator. Oh. I know, crazy. Oh. And, then, <laughs> and then I uh, took the whole month of January off, traveled. And then in February, um, the Guillermo del Toro movie that they filmed in Toronto. You know how they did a couple um, days yeah, in yeah. Buffalo. I worked in the production office on that in Buffalo for pretty much the whole month of February. Then I came out. I'm in Atlanta now. So I'm oh. uh, with Joanne again, who was the producer on A Quiet Place too. So she brought me out here for um, a movie. And I was out here for a week before, you know, everything kind of got mm. shut down. So it was like crazy. I got, I like got my apartment, I got furniture. And so it was like, I got here and things were fine. And then day by day time, I was like, all right, this is not, this yeah. is not good. Like this is escalating. I was like, all right, no, I, we're going to get shut down. Like I can feel it. Mm-hmm. And I was nervous because I had just got here. I was supposed to be on this movie to the end of November. Like I had planned out basically my whole 2020 like with yeah. the money I was gonna make and like a new apartment like I just I had it all figured out and I was mm-hmm. like what? how am I gonna get out this lease like I just all those things kind of went in my head um so she called me that Saturday and was like so you know like it's a pause she basically said like I had a couple options like I could go home um they still pay for my housing great or I could stay work from home and just keep everything normal but we wouldn't go into the office but we just work from home mm-hmm. and I don't really have a I mean I have my mom's house to go back to Niagara Falls but the apartment in Jersey I rented it out so yeah. you know I didn't really this was kind of what I was going to make my home so it's just me so I was like I'm staying yeah you know it's just me if anything I'm more safer here I'm not around anybody else um yeah. I can go on my little patio, you know, so I have been working from home. It's not a lot of work, to be honest, which is, you know, but I'm still getting paid and everything. So I really, I'm not complaining at all. Like I'm healthy. My family is healthy. I still have a roof over my head. Um, I still have a job. This movie, I can't really talk about it, but hopefully I know that they want to make it. So I think, you know, we don't know what's going to happen, but hopefully um, once everything gets back up again, you know, mm-hmm. we'll just kind of press on and, you know, do what we can to get this movie made. But yeah, the first two weeks were really hard for me, to be honest, because I I was still like questioning everything. I was like, okay, I, am I getting paid this week or two weeks? Yeah. What's happening after the first two weeks? Like, is it done? You know, so the first two weeks were really hard for me mentally. Like, I just didn't know what was going to happen. Um this is the third week and this has been the best week for me so far because I kind of just surrendered and accepted the new norm. Um, And also kind of knowing that I do have a roof over my head and that, you know, I paid my rent on the first. I'm like, well, I'm here for another month. (laughs) (laughs) That's kind of where it is. It's just like, I don't know what's going to happen tomorrow, but I'm here right now. (laughs) I think that's what it was. I was like, well, I'm about to pay this April rent. So I'm def. I know at least I'll be here for another month, and everything is paid for. So I was like, I just gotta, you know, I know I'm not gonna get kicked out in a couple of days, or so. I just was like, I gotta just focus on what I can control. And once the end of the month comes up, and you know, we'll just kind of see what is going on. But I talk to my boss every day, um, and if I have questions, she'll she'll answer what she can. Um, And obviously, it's a little bit easier for me because it's coming directly from the producer, obviously. Um, And there's obviously a ton she can't tell me. But at least I know if I have a question, I can just ask her directly. Um, So she does 
kind of help ease my mind <laughs> a little bit because um, you know they're making the decision so it, it helps to kind of know what is going on yeah that's that is awesome that's awesome <laughs> I'm so happy that you that you're down in Atlanta yeah I was in Atlanta back in in the beginning of 2018 I worked here before on a Fox show okay. Um, so it's nice to be back again, and I have my aunt here and cousins, so I don't always feel so alone, you know, yeah. I, you know I have, you know, close family. Yeah. Right before Bashira, and then right after Bashira, I bounced around the country a lot. Really? So, yeah, because I, I did, so my journey kind of went a little similar. Um, like, I did... I did two movies in Buffalo back to back. I did The Purge and then Clover. And there was supposed to be a third movie that was supposed to start that February. Mm -hmm. And it got pushed to November. I didn't know, uh, so that like, once that happened, there was no more production until the summer. Yeah. And so I didn't know anybody in New York. I didn't know anybody anywhere. All the people I knew were out, were out in LA. So I went out there for, month or two something like that and it was that was good it was a good experience in terms of working mm -hmm. um, I worked a bit more than I thought that I would but if you're gonna go out to LA you need a plan <laughs> and, <laughs> and I did not have a plan just go and wing it you don't think what's up LA is not a place where you can just go and wing it you think you can, it, it's, you just, I didn't know anything about Los Angeles. I'd never been, like the furthest west I had been at that point was Chicago. Okay. So, yeah, really? I knew nothing. I knew nothing. Mm -hmm. I went out there and a friend of my wife's coworker said that I could crash on his, like his floor for a couple of days because he was going to be gone. Well, he was not gone, <laughs> I found. And it was, it was a nightmare. And so I think it was like night two, I was like, oh crap, I have to find a place to sleep. And so for like that first month, I was trying to, it was every couple of days, I was trying to find a place, figure out where I was going to sleep that night. I stayed in like terrible hostels that were not hostels and like, wow. sketchy of like, it was. Adventure. Hmm? You had a real adventure. I had a real adventure. But, like, so, I, but when I was out there, it was very much just, like, I'm alone. Like, I was very much aware that I was by myself. Mm -hmm. And so, I'm glad that you have people down there that you can kind of connect with and, you know, not be by yourself. Especially during this time, it helps. But um, I get, like, L.A. to me just, in general, feels very lonely. It I mean, it has that, that feeling like it can feel like it doesn't have the same energy as New York City to me. Right. It definitely doesn't. Um, I, and go there. It's like, I don't know. I like, I like the New York City energy in the sense of everybody's hustling. You got people in like million dollar business suits that have like four jobs. Mm -hmm. Everybody is busting their ass to get something done. Whereas in LA, while that still may be the case, it's a lot slower. Yeah, yeah, it feels and, more chill. Yeah, but it, I mean, like, it's not even, it, for me, it didn't even feel chill because I was still working. Mm -hmm. So I'm still like in film mode, but just like, I don't know, everybody just kind of moved, like they glided. And I'm just like- <laughs> Why are we not running? Yeah, let's let's go. Come on, like we're burning daylight here, and it's like, all right, cool. We're I mean, like we're going as fast as we can. It's like, no, no, no. <laughs> but I lo I did love L.A. because I went out there in February, and <laughs> got away from the cold, cold. Yeah, I landed I landed in in L.A. and I texted my wife. I was like, it's six p.m. and it's seventy five degrees outside. Wow. She's like, it snowed three feet since you left this morning. <laughs> oh my god, this is amazing. Yeah, it was awesome. I hate the cold. I hate the cold so much. Would you like to go out there, you think, permanently or? Uh, see, I, there, I want to, but I, I don't, like, there's something about New York. 
There's just something about New York that is like a vibe. Ty, New York is a vibe. New York is a vibe. I would like to be by coastal. Mm-hmm. I would like to split and do like I don't know, May till December in New York. Yeah. And and do the winter months in Los Angeles and yeah. just kind of work that way. Have a New York TV show and an LA TV show and Yeah, go back and forth. Yeah. That just that to me seems perfect. <laughs> work out you know you kind of escape the whole cold and not that it'd be super hot but it would be way nicer than being back home. yeah exactly exactly and you miss the heat in LA like the the summer months yeah all good all good you're in LA for all the award shows yeah <laughs> I didn't even think about that yeah you get that- when out there the the uh the Oscars were happening and I was driving and I was like, what in the world is going on on this street? They have been, it's been shut down for a week. And then I saw like an ad for the Oscars and I was like, oh. <laughs> it is kind of cool to be on LA for those things is you get those, you know, type of events that you don't really get in other areas. Yeah. And I mean, I, I wish that I had known a couple of more different people, like a couple of more higher up people. So I could have probably like talked my way into those things, but um, my my wife's cousin, her uh, husband works for YouTube. He's like a high up, but like with YouTube or something. Mm-hmm. And he had an early ticket to Black Panther, so I got to go see it the day before it opened. Ah, that's that was, cool. That was, yeah. So I had a really cool LA experience with with stuff like that. Um, and it wasn't a lot, but. Um, LA was different than New York, <laughs> very much. It's definitely a whole kind of different vibe. No, oh Ty, I'm so glad I got to talk to you. Oh, this was a lot of fun. I know, cause I've been trying to. We've been trying to do an interview for so long, and mm. then cause normally I don't do them virtually. Like it's always kind of in person. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just always only done them in person and obviously with the social distancing thing and obviously this is only going to be virtual so Mm -hmm. I said we kind of get to put them both together and like finally have a chat now I know this is doing great we we absolutely have to do this again like this is we let's chat once things kind of go back to normal be like well how is it being back to work all right I'm I'm down for that I'm down for that thank you so much Ty stay safe Keep right in. I definitely can't wait to talk to you again. Likewise. Wash your hands. I will. I will. (laughs) Bye. Bye.